Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder here in Louisville, Kentucky, the St. Stephen Baptist Church. Why are we doing this? We're doing it because we are coveting together to spend meaningful moments with the Master. And the best way to do that is to unpack God's Word and let it speak to our hearts. This week, our focus has been on no, K-N-O-W, failure. 365 fear nots in the Bible. For every day of your life, God is saying, fear not. But to, to not be a prisoner of fear, you've got to K-N-O-W, no fear. You, you've got to know the fear of the future, what that means to be afraid of the future. You've got to know what it means to be afraid of commitment and uh, to be afraid of failure. Today, we want to talk about fear of loneliness. Those are one of the six principal fears that plague the human experience, a fear of loneliness. Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says this. It says, very early the, the next morning, Jesus got up, went to a place where he could be alone to pray. Now, brothers and sisters, we are what is called gregarious. That's a good word. Gregarious means social. We are social creatures. God made us social. And uh, just like birds fly in flocks and cattle gather in herds and fish swim in schools, we exist in community with one another. In the beginning, in the book of creation, uh, the book of Genesis, uh, God said this about Adam. After God had made Adam, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. Now, Adam is in paradise. Nothing is wrong with his environment, but he has no one to relate to. He is relationally malnourished. And God said that it is not good for him to be alone. And that aloneness that God decreed is not good is true at all times, in all places. We were made for each other. How do they punish you in prison? When they wanna punish you while you're in prison, what do they put you in? They put you in isolation. One of the most inhumane things, the old prison industrial complex is an inhumane institution because it targets uh, especially black men who are disproportionately the victims of, of, of mass incarceration, which is one of the issues that we must address in this presidential election with the Democratic candidates, especially since Joe Biden was the architect of mass incarceration. His plan did that, and he, and he has to speak to that issue because isolation, incarceration and isolation is always an evil thing because God didn't make us to be isolated. God made us to be in relationship to one another. Now, what is loneliness? Loneliness is this. Loneliness is a feeling of isolation. I'm isolated. You can be in a crowd and still feel isolated. You can be married and still feel isolated. And that's the worst feeling in the world married and isolated, not in relationship. You can be a part of a family and feel, still experience a feeling of isolation. In addition to feeling isolated, this is what loneliness is. It's not only isolated, isolation, but as a result of the isolation, this is how you're feeling. You're feeling unneeded. You're feeling unwanted. You're feeling unnecessary. That's what it is. Loneliness is isolation, which makes us feel un unneeded, unwanted, and unnecessary. And God says that's not good, and we have a fear of it. I think perhaps one of the great fears that many seniors have with growing old is this feeling that they're going to be isolated. Then when they no longer are functional, that you're going to take your mom, you're going to take your dad, you're going to put them in a nursing home where they will be isolated. And as a result of the isolation, they feel unneeded, unwanted, unnecessary. They have no useful purpose. They have no meaning in life. That's a terrible thing. 
That's terrible. Well, notice what it says. Very early the next morning, Jesus got up and went to a place where he could be alone to pray. Please notice it says Jesus was alone, but it doesn't say Jesus was lonely. There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Just because you are alone, or let's say you're a single person, does not mean that you're lonely. In fact, there are times when it's good to be alone, to get off away from people, to do some reflection and praying and some honest introspection. That's a good thing. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's alone by himself. It's good to do that sometimes. You know, sometimes when people are getting on your nerves, what do you say? Would you leave me alone? In other words, they're getting on your nerves. And sometimes you need to be out to yourself where you can just have some me time. I get that. That's, it. That's being alone. So Jesus was alone, but he was not lonely. But there was a time when Jesus was lonely. Lonely. And the time Jesus was lonely when he was hanging on the cross. When he was hanging on the cross, we read these words. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me or abandoned me? See, aloneness is when you're getting off to yourself for development, for rest. Loneliness is feeling isolated, unwanted, unneeded, unnecessary, or abandoned. That word forsaken literally means abandoned. Now, why did God abandon Jesus while he was hanging on the cross? Because when Jesus was dying on the cross at this very moment, that that very moment when he said this is the moment Jesus died for our sins. All of the sins of the world, past, present, future, your sins, my sins, were put on Jesus at this time. And God turned his back on Jesus because the holiness of God could not have a relationship with Jesus who had become sin for you and I. He experienced separation from God, which explains what real loneliness is. Loneliness is a feeling of separation from God. And when you've got God in your life, even when you don't have people in your life, you can make it. But when you feel like you've been separated from God or you're no longer close to God, that is the worst kind of loneliness you can experience. And at that moment, Jesus was feeling loneliness. Uh, but then soon after that, he transitioned back into relationship with his father when he says, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Loneliness is when you feel like you have been abandoned. And it's a terrible thing, the feeling of abandonment when in time of need, those people who should be there for you uh, have abandoned you. That's a terrible thing. Well, my brothers and my sisters, even the Apostle Paul felt a sense of abandonment when he was in jail. Listen to what he says. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, he says, For Demas, because he loved this world, he's in jail, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. That word deserted is the same word we read when Jesus was on the cross, forsakenness, deserted. So Paul's in jail. Paul's on death row. And the friend who he should have had, Demas, has done what? Has abandoned him. Look at verse 16. Verse 16 says, At my first defense, no one came to support, but everyone, there it is again, deserted me. He's feeling alone because Demas has deserted him, abandoned him, and people he depended on had deserted him. He's feeling alone and isolated. But look, if you will, at verse 17. Verse 17, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the mouth 
from the, from the lion's mouth. People will desert you. People will abandon you in times of need. But Paul said, Demas left me, everyone has left me, but the Lord never deserted me. And the Lord, because he was with me, gave me strength. And that's why you don't have to feel fearful about loneliness, because God will never, ever desert you or leave you. In fact, there's a promise that's found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 5, that says this, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. There will never be a time that you're by yourself. Never. Because God has made a promise. Paul said it. Demons has forsaken me. Everyone has forsaken me. But the Lord stood by me. And God will always. That's why you don't have to be afraid of loneliness. Because God, abandoned, feeling abandoned. Because God will always be there for you. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt sin breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul, but I heard the voice of Jesus saying, still fight on. I promise never to leave you, never to leave you alone. And it's a promise that has been tried and it has been proven to be true. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Help us to know the difference between being alone and being lonely. There are times when we need to be alone as Jesus was alone, but we never need to feel in lonely. And sometimes we feel lonely. In fact, somebody praying with me feels lonely because they have been abandoned by someone who should have been there for them. But even when our friends and our family is not there, we trust your promise in Hebrews chapter 13, verse five, that you will never leave us and never forsake us. Help us to, to remember your word and internalize it in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you real good. Thank you for being with us for another powerful point to ponder. And if you need prayer, please contact us uh, here at St. Stephen Church at info uh, at ssclive.org. Contact us. We'd love to have you to become a part of our online church community. God bless you. And as we depart, don't forget what we always say. Stay safe. Stay sane. If you can, stay home. God bless you.